But the amazing thing about recognizing and gaining familiarity with open intelligence is that because it's the basis of every impression and idea and feeling that we have, um, that when we allow the feeling of not being at home to be as it is, then we realize very deeply that that is our home. <laughs> uh, that that feeling of not being at home is where we find our most cozy home possible. <laughs> and uh, equally when we feel like we're at home, that's also where our home is. And because our home is everything, everywhere, all pervasive, it means that our sense of home is infinite. It comes with us wherever we go, and it stays with us however we feel. And um, this is similar to the fact that the sky always pervades everything that appears within it. And um, there can be a, an aeroplane can fly past with this carrying one of those signs saying, I'm not at home, but the sky is deeply at home, even when that plane's flying through. <laughs> So, when we allow data to be as it is, open intelligence is instinctively obvious to us. And um, we can always return to that when we remember, allow everything to be as it is. And find our home exactly where we are. And because that's the only place that uh, we will ever find ourselves in. Everything else is hypothetical. So um, we're born here and uh, where we are right now that's where we're born, and that's where we live, and that's where we die. We're always just here. <laughs> Infinitely. And naturally perfect. And um, we can just allow that to be as it is. There's no need necessarily to think about it, or formulate it, or figure it out, or... It's just the way it is. Open intelligence pervading everything. And so being together, for me, uh, I don't know if it's like this for everybody, but for me, the most um, significant, or I can see over the last six years, that what has most strongly affected me in terms of my own gaining assurance in, in spontaneous benefit is simply spending time with other people for whom it is deeply rooted. And um, of course, as well as that, or on top of that, there's my own practice of short moments and, uh, and the teaching texts. And, um, but for me personally, the most powerful thing has been spending time with my teacher and community. And I find that um, just spending time with people um, in a receptive and an open way that those people's qualities who I 
deeply admire and cherish and honor become my own without me having to do anything at all. And um, so this is one of the incredible benefits of having a teacher is that the more open and receptive we can allow ourselves to be, the more naturally we find that the qualities we aspire to, they just become increasingly evident in our experience without us having to do anything at all, anything clever or anything complicated, without us having to work anything out. <laughs> For me, it's almost like um, uh, probably most people, like probably most people in my generation, I've spent far too much time playing computer games, and uh, or, or maybe it's a good thing. I don't know, but um, loads of time, and in computer games, usually there's like cheats that you can you can look up on the internet and you type in a certain thing, and then suddenly you're at the last, you're on the, the last level. Or, you know, you go through the whole game and nothing can harm you or something like that. And um, for me, uh, the Four Mainstays, it's like a cheat. It's like, ooh, that's... <laughs> it's that part of me is like, ooh, that seems a bit too easy. <laughs> like, you know, uh, part of me, you know, just through habit, wants it to be difficult. But... Um, yeah, the more I've just resigned to the simplicity of it, the more effective it's become. So just, uh, just participation in this wonderful community of people who are deeply committed to living a life full of love. Active participation in that and commitment to that and being of support to each other in that. This is the best way to get the most benefit out of our stay during these two weeks. And um, this is what you've been doing naturally. <laughs> so that's easy. Like Candice said in the video, spontaneous benefit is our natural propensity as human beings. And um, the fact that it's our natural propensity implies that it doesn't require us to do something to arrive at it. Um, and um, so uh, I remember before I left Bristol, I had a, I, I lived in Bristol for a couple of years with the community there and I sort of moved out a few months ago and, and so I had a, a lovely gathering where I invited the community over to, just to have some food together and, um, and uh, one of our community members has the best dog in the world so um, the, the dog came as well and uh, <laughs> it was amazing, halfway through the gathering, somebody noticed that, wow, that every time somebody arrived at the gathering, this beautiful dog in instantly jumped up just to go to greet the person. And um, we realized, wow, that's so beautiful. That's the, the, the sort of, the, as soon as she realized somebody new had arrived, she was like, oh, I have to go and say hello to them and welcome them. <laughs> It's like the best, uh, like open meeting uh, person in, in the world. This dog, like the, the to greet and welcome and hello, and we're so happy you're here. And so somebody noticed that <laughs> this dog had just uh, perfect mastery of being an open meeting welcomer. And um, yeah. I've always been very inspired by animals and um, how they have a level of simplicity and innocence that, um, that has really, really supported me to benefit 
uh, from the mainstays fully. Um, because the more I've adopted that simplicity, the more easy it's become for me to benefit from the mainstays. Um, whereas when I first came to the training, I was uh, d d like so full of determination, which is brilliant, but so full of determination and very little idea of how to use that determination. And the way that I used it in the beginning was to try to, it, w it was all day long, all day, all night, to try to figure out what is open intelligence? How do I best practice open intelligence? Do I understand open intelligence correctly? What is the most efficient and quickest way to practice open intelligence? What's the most effective practice? Am I practicing correctly? And I just thought about that continuously. And um, whenever it occurred to me that I had the choice to take a short moment, I first had to think about whether it's a good idea to take a short moment for about 10 minutes. And finally, after uh, dipping into my resources of, you know, uh, logic and reason, and then I would finally arrive at the conclusion, yes, taking a short moment is a beneficial uh, response, and then I would take my short moment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever saw me go like that, it, that was me taking a short moment. <laughs> but uh, that 10 minutes just decreased and decreased and decreased, and um, largely with my teacher's um, support. Um, because uh, my teacher said to me uh, that this, this effort that you're putting into it is, is clearly an expression of how committed you are to living a beneficial life. It's an expression of how determined you are to master it. But he said, the only thing you need to do is learn to express your commitment more effectively. <laughs> and um, that means to just immediately relax mind and body whenever it, whenever it occurs to you, without having to assure yourself uh, with logic and reason that it's a good idea to do that. And so slowly I... Mm. I uh, had enough experience of the benefit of open intelligence that I didn't need to think about it anymore. I just deeply rested every single time it occurred to me to do so. Whether it seemed attractive to me, whether I wanted to do it or not, whether, whether I was afraid to do it or not, I just did it just rest deeply. And um, in this way, the spontaneous benefit, which is everybody's natural propensity, uh, becomes more and more obvious to us. And we see it in just in real situations like we have a conversation with a, f a friend or a family member, and for some reason during that conversation, we remember to rest deeply. And we find that our responses are on a, an entirely different level of skill and sensitivity and benefit. And uh, so every time we experience the real practical expression of the benefit of open intelligence, it's like there's more evidence. We have more experiential evidence of it. And due to that, we find that we need less. Um, there's less hesitation in us to rely full force on open intelligence. Because with our experience of the benefits, 
uh, we, we are just taken over by it and we, we know without any doubt that, no, that spontaneous benefit is innate to all humans. Not just those that, not just those that are interested in it and practice it, but also those that aren't interested in it. <laughs> and spontaneous benefit is every human being's natural propensity. And uh, so when we allow ourselves to be open and defenseless, this is just our natural expression. And there's nothing even s almost comparable in terms of a blessing than to be introduced and supported in that. What could, what could possibly compare? It's complete freedom from the uh, prison of needing to control our data and discovering that we are inseparable from the open intelligence of nature itself. It's just a, it's a full stop on a confused and a complicated life. We weren't born to live a confused and complicated life. It takes so much effort. I think everybody is secretly lazy, even if they've grown out of that habit. And um, I think that's what it sort of is, is <laughs> maybe I'm just <laughs> biased because I'm lazy, so it makes me feel better to have the idea that everybody must be lazy so then I feel better about it. But, um, but I think it's because we know instinctively that, that, that there's no effort to make. We know instinctively that there's nothing to struggle with. All of the like moving around and emotions and thoughts flying around and all the whole display, somehow we know I don't, I, it's not natural for me to be so intent on needing to do something about this display, to control it. And so when we give ourselves these short moments of not struggling with it, of allowing it to be as it is, then it, it's, there's, no, there's nothing that compares to that relief. So it's just like a firework display just all kinds of sounds and explosions and things flying around. Uh, but when we look at an, a fireworks display, we go, wow, look how beautiful that is. But the fireworks display inside, we go, no, 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 not like that, like this, not like that, like this. <laughs> but if we let it be as it is, then we go, wow, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> Thoughts, negative, positive, emotions, negative, positive, neutral, all over the place, all over the shop, endlessly, ceaselessly, unpredictably. <laughs> and it only seems like a, a thorn in our side because we have learned that uh, we need to do something about it. but we don't. <laughs>